Hello there, my name is Dax and I'm a Cub Scout. I'm here to talk to you today about becoming a Cub Scout like me. Who here knows what Cub Scouts do? What's that? Well, since this is a video, I'm just gonna tell you what they do. Cub Scouts get badges for doing fun activities. We make friends. Scouts go camping, climbing, fishing, and swimming together. We have fun, we play sports, go to parades. Scouts also help people and become the best versions of themselves. Scouts become future leaders. In fact, some Scouts have even made history. Did you know that some of our former presidents, astronauts, award-winning scientists, and actors were scouts when they were your age? Here's an example of something Cub Scouts get to do each year. Wait for it. We use our skills to make rockets and then we fly them. So, who wants to become a Cub Scout? Okay, this is still a video, so I'm gonna need you to let me know a different way. Visit BeASCOUT.org to find a pack near you. Get any questions answered and sign up to be a Cub Scout online. Make sure you have an adult help you with that part though. My name is Anya, and I'm a scout. I'm here to talk to you today about becoming a scout like me. Who here knows what scouts do? Well, since this is a video, I'm just gonna tell you what they do, and let's see if you're right. Outdoor adventure is what scouting's all about. Scouts go whitewater rafting, climbing, hiking, and camping in amazing locations. Scouts can also participate in STEM, and even become an Eagle Scout, the highest rank possible in Scout BSA, all while making great friends and growing into the very best future selves. In fact, some scouts have made history. Did you know that some of our former presidents, astronauts, award-winning scientists, and actors were scouts when they were your age? So, who wants to become a scout? Okay, this is still a video, so I'm going to need you to let me know a different way. Visit scoutsbsa.org, where you'll be able to find a troop near you, get any questions answered, and sign up to be a scout online. Hey, thanks for watching my video. I hope to see you again soon as a scout like me. tapping into my potential. I'm discovering who I am. I'm seizing the day. And making the most out of the opportunities in front of me. I'm unleashing my best work. I'm igniting my passions. Finding out how to do what I love to do. In ways I've never known before. And learning from those who've been here before. And got there before. I'm exploring my future. I am an explorer. I am an explorer. I'm an explorer. What I'm exploring, here's what I'm not. I'm not a student. I'm not at work. I'm not an intern. Nope. I'm not a pencil pusher. I'm not a procrastinator. I'm not cramming for an exam. And I'm definitely not in detention. When I'm exploring, I'm home. I'm with friends. I'm in my happy place. I'm in the zone. Sure, I study hard and take my education seriously. But I feel like exploring prepares me for my future in a different way. I mean, where else can I get this kind of experience to learn about the things that I'm passionate about? Where can I find great mentors who work in the career field I'm interested in? Where can I be me? I learn by doing. I belong by exploring. Exploring. Discover your future. Right now, life has us keeping our distance, but there's never been a more important time to come together. Scouting looks a little different than what we're used to, sure, but across the country, scouts are coming together to learn, grow, and serve even while apart, because that's what scouting has always been about. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Our culture is one of perseverance and determination. Our foundation is that of always being prepared. When you think about it, 
We've been preparing for times like these for over a hundred years. Because for the past century, we've been pioneers, adventurers, helpers, scouts. Nothing can stop us. We've got this. We are scouts. Good evening, friends, and welcome to the 2020 Cradle of Liberty Council Annual Recognition Celebration. I'm Chuck Bolger, I'm a member of the Council Executive Board, and it's truly a pleasure to welcome so many of you virtually to honor all our great volunteers. To open tonight's program, please join me in welcoming from the Northern District, Troop 303. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to guide my country and to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Before we continue, let's all take a moment together to think about all of those we have lost from scouting in the past year, especially Pete Musser, Walt Garrison, Don Ross, and my dear friend Gary Bonfante, and anyone that was close to you in scouting that you've lost. A moment, please. It's my pleasure to introduce Council President and Board Chairman Scott Storer. Welcome. I'm grateful that we have the opportunity to visit this evening. This recognition event is one tradition where it is so important that we stay the course. At last year's recognition event, I talked quite a bit about the powerful contribution of all of our volunteers and families, over 5,000 plus strong. Now I have to say, I, we, we've always been impressed with the contribution of our volunteers. Yet this year in COVID times, your contribution, no kidding, has been simply outstanding. Dan is gonna share in a moment many of those accomplishments. Yet I simply wanted to take the time and thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for the significant contributions that you've made over the last several months. So thank you and onward. Tonight I have the honor of recognizing a group who has given tirelessly to scouting for many decades, our scouting veterans. I'd like to share my heartfelt thanks to all those who celebrate a special volunteering anniversary this year and highlight three folks for milestone anniversaries. Bill O'Connor, for 70 years of service, Jay Eibner for 65 years of service, and Steve Perone for 35 years of service. Thank you for your years of dedicated service to the youth and all of scouting. Thank you leaders for making scouting possible. Thank you so much for supporting scouting. The Distinguished Unit Leader Award is presented by the Cradle of Liberty Council to recognize outstanding leaders who are not necessarily acknowledged at the council or district level because they spend most of their time at the unit level working with our youth. Each district submits nominations at the PAC, troop, and crew and ship levels, and one person per level council-wide is selected. This year at the PAC level, we are pleased to recognize, this is my man, Michael Raji from PAC 438 in Washington District. At the troop level, we are pleased to recognize George Ulrich from Troop 372 in the Roosevelt District. And at the crew and ship level, we are pleased to recognize Silveria Rodriguez from Crew 426 in the baden Powell District. Thank you all for making an impact at the unit level 
where after all, scouting is at its most important. The Venturing Leadership Award is presented by the Cradle of Liberty Council to recognize ventures and venturing advisors who have made exceptional contributions to venturing and who exemplify the Scout Oath and Law. We are happy to present this year's Venturing Leadership Awards to a youth and an adult who have helped strengthen the venturing program. Evan Conallen of Crew 401 and Karen Wanzer of Crew 1776. Thank you both for your service to the Venturing Program and the Cradle of Liberty Council. Good evening. I'm Julia Goplerud, Chair of District Operations for Cradle of Liberty Council. The District Award of Merit is presented each spring to volunteers within a district who have given distinguished service to help scouting at the unit and district level. Typically, these awards are presented at a district dinner, but since most of these had to be canceled this year, it is our honor tonight to recognize the recipients whose names are on the screen and thank them for their dedicated service to their units. Baden-Powell District, Stuart Christ and Stuart Rosenberg. Conestoga District, Ed Barker and Larry Weaver. Constellation District, Amy Giletto and Rosemary Sedkowski. Continental District, Mike Elliott and Christopher Smith. General Nash District, Jackie Prince and Matt Rossi. Lafayette District, Stuart Bowman and Eric Meck. Minquist District, Ed Lawler. Northern District, Sylvester Bowman. Roosevelt District, Jody Brabazon, Triune District, Arlene Gray, Washington District, Jennifer Clark, and Robert Raji. Thank you for all you do for scouting. Troop DOD, thank you so much for your support. Thank you leaders for making scouting so much fun. The James E. West Fellowship was created to recognize individuals families and estates who make a significant contribution to our council's endowment fund. Every year the funds from the endowment feed our programs and help us keep scouting alive. This year we are proud to recognize those individuals on the screen who made a contribution to our future. If you would like to learn more about how you can become a James E. West Fellow, contact me or any one of the staff members and we'll be happy to assist you. Again, thank you to those who are on the screen for your commitment and dedication to our scouting program. Good evening and what a great day it is to be a scout as we gather virtually tonight to celebrate uh, and recognize some volunteers who have really gone above and beyond in their service to the youth of, in, our, in our council. And it, but tonight's more than that. Tonight's about thanking and celebrating the efforts of all of our volunteers, each and every one of you, in every way that you work so hard to make scouting happen for the youth in the Cradle of Liberty Council. And hey, let's be honest, it's not been an easy thing to do this year. You know, we started off this year in January and February with gangbusters. We were looking at potentially record-setting attendance at Resica Falls. Our Cub Camp information came out on time, even a little bit early. Adventure cards were starting to ramp up. Units were really humming along with the program. Things were going great. And then March hit. And then I had to do something I never in my life thought I would do. And that's to send out an email uh, strongly recommending that all of our units stop all in-person programs and activities and camping outings. Never thought in my wildest dreams that we'd be in a position like that. You know, and so as a leadership team, we started to take a look at what are our options. You know, we've never, there's no handbook for how to deal with a pandemic. So we started talking about what our options were, and the one that kept coming up was, well, uh, there's every other organization out there is just shutting down. Maybe we should just shut down. And I think we got about 30 seconds into that conversation before our email inboxes started blowing up from volunteers all over the council saying, whoa, 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 hey, we got an idea. Our scouts don't want to stop meeting. They don't want to stop interfacing with each other. They don't want to stop their scouting program. They want to switch to a virtual platform 
Some are going to use Zoom. Some are going to use Teams. Some are going to use some ones that I've never even heard about before. Uh, but they, they wanted to keep the program going. And all of you were voicing that to us and as a staff and telling us, what else can we do? We've got to find new ways around this. I think what, what all that email traffic did was really sparked the 13th point of the Scout Law, which I know a lot of you are saying, hey, what do you mean? The 13th point of the Scout Law is the Scout is hungry. Well, I'd like to tell you that perhaps it is a Scout is resilient. Uh, it's just been absolutely amazing the turnaround and the, and the, and the, the effort and the pivoting that, that you all have done on a dime for this pandemic. You know, at one point in time, we were, we were temporarily focused on what are we going to do and, and that panic question. But that quickly turned to, all right, how do we reinvent things? How do we reinvent what we do to continue to bring our, our scouting programs to our youth? We came up together. We all came up with things like virtual merit badge classes that were hugely successful. We came up with things like our, our virtual Cub Scout activities that were targeted for specific age groups. Uh, we even have virtual campfires that, that, that literally have, have received thousands and thousands of views uh, on our, our, uh, our, our social media channels. You know, scouting became fun again for, for a lot of us. It was really, it was really in, in, invigorating and just exciting to be able to rethink what we do. And then May came. You know, we thought this thing would be turned around and behind us by then. And obviously it wasn't going anywhere. So I had to do something else I thought I would never ever do. I sat in front of a camera and I told each and every one of you that we were canceling summer camp, in-person summer camps. And that was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my career. But because of our unwavering commitment to your safety and the safety of your scouts, I absolutely stand behind that decision today 100%. And I thank our team of volunteers that really helped to inform that decision. But the coolest thing about that dark, dark day in my career was I don't think I had stopped recording that video before the camp guys came in and said, hey, uh, can we work on a virtual summer camp program? Of course, right? And that's when the Resica Fall virtual camp was born. And I don't have to tell many of you, but it was a huge success. And not only did we have 12, over 1,200 scouts participate in that program from over 32 states in our country, um, you don't know this because it never happened, but Good Morning America was going to air on July 16th, a special highlighting all the different summer camp options and different summertime options that parents had for their kids. And they were going to highlight two camps. Resica Falls was going to be one of them, the Resica Falls Virtual Camp. Unfortunately, at the last minute, the, product, the producer changed gears and they went in a different direction with a different story. But, but it was such a, such a kudos to, uh, to the amazing volunteers that put that summer camp program together. And then we followed it up with some amazing online adventures for our Cubs. Uh, we worked with PBS station to, to film uh, some of their summer camp programs right up at Camp Garrison. Uh, it was a site for a lot of STEM programming, and many of the volunteers and our council participated in that, and I thank each and every one of you. So we had some really neat things happen, and as we head into the fall, uh, we have a huge library of free digital content. And just the fact that I even made that statement shows how far we've come in the last six months, because I don't think library of digital content was even in my vocabulary back then. But we have an amazing amount of, of resources available for you as unit leaders, particularly in our Cub world, to, to open up your programs this fall and embrace uh, the, the virtual programming for your Cubs if you have to. And, and take a look at those resources. They're free and they're there for you to use so your kids can have scouting again this fall. So to say that the last six months have been a challenge is probably a huge understatement, right? But I'm ever the optimist. And I believe that there's a silver lining in everything. And the silver lining here is it's really caused us as a council and as a movement to think differently about how we do things. And as we move out of this, as we move out of the pandemic and back into the new normal, whatever that new normal happens to be, I think we as a movement are better equipped to reach more and more kids in a more relevant way to them. We've learned so much in the last six months. I'm so excited about where we're going in the next six months and beyond. So while it is a great day to be a scout, tomorrow is going to be even better. And I want to thank each and every one of you for all that you do on a, just a regular year. Uh, but this year has been so special. Thank you for your grit, your determination, your passion, and your imagination. I want to challenge you 
to, to continue to drive us, to continue to dream up new things. Let's not just keep scouting alive, but let's keep it thriving in the Cradle of Liberty Council as we have been for the last six months. So please keep pushing us, keep pushing the staff, keep pushing the team, and I promise you that we are here for you. We are here to support your visions. We are here to support uh, your dreams. Whatever we need to do to make scouting happen for your kids, we are behind you 110%. I know that there's a lot of negativity right now in the media around uh, the national BSA bankruptcy and some of the abuse cases uh, from the past. Um, there's a lot of it out there. We can't stop that. You know, it, as, as a scout executive, I try everything we can as a, as a staff to remove as many barriers as we can to your program, but I can't, I can't stop that. It's out of my hands. But what we can do, we can't stop it, but boy, we can certainly drown it out. You know, our scouting family is so large in the Creative Liberty Council that if we all took just a few minutes and told our story, tell people why scouting is so important to you and your family, it's helping, help to, people to understand why our kids wouldn't let scouting stop when, when the pandemic tried to shut us down. Why scouting survived? Because it's so important. It's so critical. Tell them why you feel like your child is safe in scouting. Tell them about the, the volumes of, of volunteer youth protection training that you have to go, to, go through regularly. Tell them about the, the background checks that you're subjected to. Tell them about the, the, the uh, youth protection guidelines that you have to adhere to and all those volumes of, of rules and regulations that you can do and can't do. Tell them about too deep leadership. Tell them about all the things that, meet, that make scouting, the Boy Scouts of America, the number one organization in the world for keeping kids safe. In a dangerous time for kids, the Boy Scouts of America is a safe haven. And that's a fact. And you can share that with your friends. We have to drown out the negativity that's out there. And I can't do it myself. Our staff can't do it. There's only 40 of us total. But we have a vested interest. We need you as parents. We need you as volunteers. Those of you who give your time, your talents, and your treasures to make sure this program can happen. We need you to help us drown that out. And if you promise to do that, we promise to support you in any way that we can. So again, thank you so much for all that you do for scouting, and congratulations to all of our honorees. I wish we had enough awards that we could give one to everybody, because you're all just amazing folks, and we really appreciate all that you do for scouting. Thanks. What about the dining hall? How was the food? Oh, it's good. It's good. Uh, like what? Apple pie. Apple pie is my favorite dessert. Pie. Even though I haven't had apple pie before, that's my first time having it. Here, it's delicious. And it's and delicious. and Rasheem was happy that that they had dessert at lunch. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought they weren't gonna give us dessert at lunch, but yeah, they did. Food is awesome. What was your favorite meal so far? Pizza. Yeah. Pizza and pancakes uh, and cereal and Fruit Loops and a worm. A worm? You ate a worm? Yeah, I actually bit it head off, but it didn't taste too good. What about like pizza? Do you guys enjoy the pizza? Oh, yeah. Not really. Not really. really. Like How? Okay. It was How spicy. We? When we were at a campsite and the dads would joke around, so like um, when we had pizza for lunch, they said, I bet you we're gonna have spaghetti with the sauce of the pizza scraped off. And we had spaghetti that <laughs> night. And then we had spaghetti with the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they said, um, or you can make ravioli with the pizza. Yeah. <laughs> you can stack the pizza and make ravioli. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was lasagna. Yeah, lasagna. Lasagna. <laughs> oh, you could like rav make ravioli like folding the pizza in the ravioli. Fold it in and fork it together. <laughs> fork it together. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta fork it. That's and then you gotta fork it. No, and then you try to pick it up and you just it falls apart. You know, You're you like, no, no. What no, happened? No, it was no, perfectly ravioli. We've reached the highlight of this evening's program, the presentation of the Silver Beaver Awards. Silver Beaver Award is given by the Creative Liberty Council for outstanding service to youth. It is the highest award that BSA presents at the council level. Those deemed worthy of this award have made a major impact 
on the youth and programs of Cradle Liberty Council in the performance of community service and the implementation of the scouting program through hard work, sacrifice, and dedication. Presenting tonight's awards are our Council President Scott Storer and our Scout Executive Dan Templer. It started as a way to spend more time with my son side by side in an exciting, fun, active environment. But the more time you spend, absorb all the training and the resources, and live the experiences, you realize it's so much more. Being involved with leadership development outside of scouting, I immediately saw how scouting was the perfect environment to help our youth discover, grow, practice, and apply leadership skills, a gap that many young adults have when they start their careers. Helping to form future leaders anchored by the Scout Oath and the Scout Law has been quite rewarding. It's exciting to see and hear about Scout alumni talk about their real world successes today, and many attribute it to the things that they learned and experiences they had in scouting. And to me, there is no better way to give back as scouting teaches us and to pay it forward than to help develop future leaders. And as an added bonus, work side by side with dedicated fellow volunteers who became mentors, trusted advisors, and friends. My favorite scouting story has to be from summer, summer camp a few years back. The summer schedule worked out perfectly and the boys were able to go to Philmont and summer camp, both in the same summer if they wished. A few days after the Philmont trip had ended, my son Will and his friends unpacked, repacked, and we headed off to summer camp. It was a great week as usual, and it was great to see the 11 and 12 year olds hang on every word as the older boys described their Philmont experience and what awaited the younger boys. A true tradition was to have a roses and thorn discussion around the campfire at the end of our week of summer camp. As predicted, each first year called out the latrine as one of their biggest thorns. The interesting thing came when the Philmont crew had a chance to talk. They also called out the latrine, but not as a thorn as they had in the years past, but the year, this year as a rose. That's when it hit me, one of those scouting aha moments. The boys had gained something very special, perspective, another thing that scouting provides, something that will help them now and in the future of their lives. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cradle of Liberty Council is honored to present the Silver Beaver Award to Steve Elliott. Hi, what scouting means to me? It means adventure. It means being able to take children out of their normal habitat within an eight mile, eight block radius, out to the, the suburbs, being able to go to camp, summer camp, uh, camping during the weekends. Uh, we've been to Beach Jam. These kids are excited when we can go out of their normal habitat. And I'm glad to see the faces, the smiles, when you see them enjoying themselves, doing something different than they normally do. Oh, it is so wonderful when we did the um, covery last year. We ended up with slow moving, people were coming and participating. Next thing you know, we had almost 400 participants. And I loved it when I looked down at my youngest grandson, the youngest of five. All five of my grandchildren are involved in scouting, which is an awesome thing. My oldest grandson just achieved his Eagle Scout January 23rd of this year before COVID hit. And the baby boy who's six, oh, he was running around with his other lion and tiger scouts, having a blast, shooting BBs, slingshots, archery. They had such smiles on their face and they had such camaraderie between the little ones. They didn't have to worry about an adult just watching over them or hovering over them. They knew where they were going. I, all you had to point them in the direction, and there they go flying. And I love that freedom, especially being a unit from the city of Philadelphia. We had, uh, there was a shooting that, that weekend. And when I realized the smiling faces of those little guys, just having a blast, and it was about eight of them traveling together between the lions and the tigers, oh, made me feel so good to know that we took them away from the city away from some violence, 
and being out in the camp, Camp Hart, so that they could have a ball and not feel encumbered. I enjoyed that tremendously. So scouting's been a great adventure. My oldest um, son is involved. We are a family of scouting. And my two granddaughters are also part of the Scouts for KSA. My Karen, 12 years old, has 22 merit badges already. And she is second class. She is looking forward to becoming an Eagle Scout like her uncle Jonathan. And John just grins from ear to ear to think about his niece wants to do something he's doing. So thank you for this opportunity to share. Um, it's a great event, great exercise to be out here with scouting, getting the kids involved away from their normal habitat and being able to enjoy themselves while they learn a lot in scouting. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cradle of Liberty Council is honored to present the Silver Beaver Award to Cynthia Fullenwellen. Scouting is a big part of my life, and it's an interest that I share with my husband and son, both of them are Eagle Scouts. But that's not why I love scouting. I love scouting because it's a program in which everybody can be successful. You don't have to be a star athlete, you don't have to be an A student, and you don't have to be the most popular person in school. For some, success can be achieved through leadership or rank advancements, but for others, success can be achieved through making friends, building confidence, or simply having fun. Scouting is a good fit whether you like camping and a wide range of outdoor activities, or if you like STEM, art, or computer programming. The best part of the BSA is that now it's more inclusive. Scouting shapes people, but people also shape the scouting movement. Youth and adults have a home in scouting now, regardless of gender, sexual orientation, physical or mental ability, race, religion, or ethnicity. Now that our program is open to all, let's celebrate our differences and find common purpose in living the Scout Oat and Law. And let's make sure to give all Scouts and Scouters the support and the resources they need to fully benefit from the Scouting program. A few years ago, the phone rang at night. I answered it and it was Chuck Bolger, who's the Baden-Powell District Nominating Chair. I automatically assumed that he wanted to talk to my husband, who's a lifelong scouter and has his finger in many, many scouting pies. But Chuck said no, he wanted to talk to me. Then he proceeded to ask me to be district chair for Baden-Powell. My first response was, Chuck, you misspoke. You mean my husband. He said, no, Julia, I mean you. I said, Chuck, you've got to be kidding me. I'm not a lifelong scouter. I've never held a leadership position in a unit and Baden-Powell's never had a female as a district chair. Chuck said, just think about it and get back to me. So I thought about it, and for three years I was district chair for Baden-Powell District. But I didn't take the job because Chuck was persuasive, and I didn't take the job because my husband convinced me to do so. I took the job because my Eagle Scout son, who was away at college, called me on the phone and said, Mom, you need to take this position you offer a fresh perspective in an organization that could always use new ideas. Why don't you become a chair and shake things up a bit? Well, how could I refuse? And from then on, I've been shaking things up. Change is good. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cradle of Liberty Council is honored to present the Silver Beaver Award to Julia Goplerud. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cradle of Liberty Council is honored to present the Silver Beaver Award to Matt Gutterman. I think scouting is important to me. Uh, as being a scoutmaster for 27 years, I had uh, a lot of contact with young boys joining the troop and seeing them grow up and then having them come back with families, jobs and stuff. And they, uh, 
they were very uh, receptive of what scouting had done to them, how important it was to help them make decisions in crucial times when I wasn't involved and I wasn't there. To see them growing up from uh, 10 year olds to 18 year olds has been very rewarding and I'm glad I got into the youth, uh, scouting movement for that. My uh, story is that uh, uh, my son Christopher was uh, 10 and a half and he came to me and he said, Dad, I want to do what some of my friends are doing. And then like any father, that scared me to death. And uh, he, uh, he said, I want to join scouting. Well, I had been in scouting as a kid and I got excited about it. And uh, I was a UPS driver, so I wore a uniform. And I walked into one of the meetings in uh, late October of that year. And the scoutmaster looked at me and says, Rick, do you have a problem wearing a uniform? I said, no, I'm wearing one now. What? Next thing you know, I was assistant scoutmaster. A year later, I was scoutmaster. So after 27 years, I stepped down as scoutmaster and got involved in district. And my grandson, Nathan, he, uh, he, he wanted to join scouts. So uh, I went over and I was just a, a parent then. I didn't get involved in the unit too much. He had a really great den leader. So Scout Sunday came along and I said, well, it's proper that I wear my uniform. So I did. Uh, within a year, I was a cup master for the next three years and uh, crossed over to hit with them and, and joined a troop and became an assistant scoutmaster. So it, I just thought it's funny that uh, how fate stepped in my line so many times in my life to keep me involved in scouting. And postscript, I have a five-year-old grandson who this Saturday will become a Cub Scout. So we're very proud in the Killian family. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cradle of Liberty Council is honored to present the Silver Beaver Award to Rick Killian. Scouting, what it means to me, well, it's a opportunity to give back many of the experiences that I had starting at a little over 10 years old. I was fortunate to join a scout troop even though I wasn't quite 11. And what it became from that point forward was an opportunity to have a lot of fun, do a lot of outdoor activities, learn a lot of skills. And what it now means to me is over the time, I've had an opportunity in various roles to help other scouts get into the activities, get into the fun, get into the growth and learning. One of the big major things that I got out of scouting was, and what it meant to me was the whole idea of leadership, starting with some patrol leadership, uh, various roles in my scout troop in Snow Hill, Maryland, uh, moving to my scout troop in Hartsville, Pennsylvania, and then eventually becoming president of my Explorer Post in Hartsville. What I learned is how to help other young people and volunteers make things happen and do some good work and still have a lot of fun doing it. Uh, the canoe trips and all those kind of activities were highlights. The other thing was many, many good weeks at either Rodney Scout Camps in Maryland or Akinikin Scout Camp in Bucks County, which was where my home area was as a youth. Since then, I've had the opportunity to have some roles in the adult side of scouting as a volunteer, as a finance chairman, uh, and other activities that I'm now involved in, and just basically helping things change and grow. Now very active in a whole effort to take a look at our diversity and inclusion area and make sure we're doing everything we can in scouting to make it a great experience for many different kinds of people from all kinds of backgrounds. As everybody knows now, we have an opportunity to recruit and have a lot of young ladies join us. And that's been exciting and a great opportunity for me to help make that happen in different ways. A favorite memory of scouting to me was the 1957 Jamboree at Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, actually just about a half a mile from our headquarters office of Cradle of Liberty Council. I, as a young scout from Maryland, along with another good friend of mine, were supported by our troop and all the parents and volunteers, and we went through a lot of training to get ready to go to the Jamboree. We ended up joining a Jamboree troop 
which actually had practice camping trips getting ready to come up to Pennsylvania to the Jamboree. The Jamboree was exciting in many ways. It's kind of the first meeting I ever had with over 50,000 other people. It was a lot of interesting youth from all over the world. Also, we got a chance to listen to the President of the United States. They put us on a train. We went down to see a, a baseball game. The Phillies were playing in Connie Mack Stadium, which no longer is with us. But we had a lot of actually adventures. The exciting thing for my mother, who was a great leader and volunteer and fundraiser in scouting, was when I came home from the Jamboree and I presented her with a living horn toad, which I had traded for at the Jamboree. That horn toad came from Texas. I traded a neckerchief uh, scarf and a couple other things and brought him with me. And my mother was thrilled, or at least she acted like it. And that horn toad ended up living on our front screened in porch, making sure that any of the flies or anything else that came by were well consumed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cradle of Liberty Council is honored to present the Silver Beaver Award to Jim McHale. Scouting means coming in third. The order of the Scout Oath is purposeful, and in repeating it, a Scout promises to do their duty to God first, others second, and then themselves third. And while our beliefs in God might differ greatly from one Scout to another, or Scouter to another as well, those beliefs should still come first and foremost to help us understand our place in this world and should guide our interactions with nature and with others around us as well. Discussions about faith and a youth's connection to God has been one of the awesome opportunities for me as a volunteer leader, and I cherish the opportunity to help guide youth in those areas. Duty to others could be family, friends, or even complete strangers. And putting the needs ahead of others ahead of our own is a great responsibility and also an opportunity. And while those duties have to come first, that doesn't mean that it should ever stop us from working to better ourselves as well. So a difficult question was also posed to me uh, to pick one scouting story to share. And uh, being recognized with an award like the Silver Beaver allows me to think back to cherished time of camaraderie, working with the Council's High Adventure Team, uh, my years of staff on Resca Falls, and also, uh, most of all, my amazing family of scouts and scouters at Troop 542 in Maple Glen. But my favorite story is not necessarily of a single moment in time but rather it's a collection of memories. And I see a small campfire just starting to die out after a long day of swimming in the river, playing frisbee or climbing a rock face. Only a few remain, a scoutmaster, a couple of his closest assistants, and a few of the hardest working junior leaders. They're still up cleaning after a rousing campfire. Most of the troop, they've been off to bed for over an hour, but as the lanterns burn out the last of their propane, the small group sits quietly just around the embers that are left. We talk about the day, we review plans for the morning, and then we share our favorite memories of scouting years. Sometimes funny, sometimes challenging, but each memory will last a lifetime, and it helps shape who we are. Because those scouting memories, they turn into a life of scouting. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cradle of Liberty Council is honored to present the Silver Beaver Award to John Schultz. Hi, so those of you who know me know that hate getting my picture taken and being the center of attention is my second most um, discomforting thing. So I'm way outside of my comfort zone here. Um, what does scouting mean to me? I brought two pictures with me. I don't know how well they're going to show up in the camera here. This was my den. This was my five arrow of lights. I would say after marrying my husband and having my son, the best thing I ever did in my life as a life-changing event was to join scouting and say I would be these young men's um, den leader. 
several years later, all five of those men became Eagle Scouts. So this is my pride and joy. One of them is my son, but I consider them all to be like sons to me. Um, they're still involved in my life. So when you ask me what scouting means to me, it's having the opportunity to be so closely involved in a young person's life and helping them to develop and define young men and now women. Um, I've had that opportunity as well. Funny story in scouting, I, I picked two because I have one that um, involves adults. Um, if you've been to Wood Badge, you'll remember our dear departed friend, Bob Gabage. And I recall him being the MC for the Win All You Can game. I can tell you I never laughed harder in my life than I did that evening when he was the MC of that game. And I think anybody who took the course that year would have to agree. It was an amazing, amazing time. Funny scout story is two twin brothers. Uh, their first year at summer camp and our Dan Beards go out on a hike for the day and they camp off with some adult leaders on their own. And uh, it's quiet at night, they're in their tent, and all of a sudden you hear one twin brother saying to the other, um, this is gonna be really embarrassing, but can you check my butt for ticks? So it gave us all a good chuckle because it's not something you would normally hear coming from a tent. So that was one of my funny scout memories. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cradle of Liberty Council is honored to present the Silver Beaver Award to Charlene Sherry Sutton. What does scouting mean to me? In a word, values, with personal development, physical fitness, awareness and service to others. Most importantly to the individual, youth, fun. Scouting benefits our communities, community, country and world. Scouting means awareness and development. Scouting needs adventure. Living the Scout Law promotes our values while helping others at all times. A Scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. That is what Scouting is to me. I have a favorite story that I like to use and tell our Scouts as they advance towards Eagle. and. It doesn't really have anything to do with me personally or anything, an adventure that happened with me because I have hundreds of those and I think that the best is yet to be. And someday I will be able to tell some of my stories. But what I tell my scouts is, why would you want to be an eagle? And here's one of the reasons and what an eagle is to somebody else who has accomplished much. I have many favorite individual antecedents, but this true story of an engaged scout who earned his eagle and joined the Marines, reporting after a graduation, had no court of honor. He trained, went to war in the Pacific, and while wounded with his company, held off and stopped an entire Japanese regiment. While operating four machine guns while his platoon lay wounded and dead. After reinforcements, which happened to be a cook parade, he led a bayonet charge and drove the enemy back into preventing a breakthrough on the American lines. Because of his action at, near Henderson Field on Guadalcanal, he was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. He also was awarded, after being bayoneted himself, the Purple Heart and a unit citation. He was made a first lieutenant and received the Congressional Medal of Honor and 11 other additional medals and honors throughout World War II and Korea. His most valued medal was his eagle. Why? His claim was that he earned his eagle. His platoon earned the Congressional Medal of Honor. But there's a rest of the story about this eagle. 
He was a lieutenant colonel before he was awarded his eagle. Read about Mitchell Page. Mitchell Page is a great story about why you might like to be an Eagle Scout and why Eagle is so important. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cradle of Liberty Council is honored to present the Silver Beaver Award to Walt Waholic. Hi, my name is Dick Walsh. I've been a member of Barron Hill Troop 12 since September of 1968 and the Master of Troop 12 since March of 2000. What scouting means to me is the ability to show our youth the importance of teamwork and communications and to be a better person and being responsible. Uh, my favorite scouting memories are from being at Philmont with Robert Pappy Gilbert and going to Schaefer's Pass and being able to see three different states from that point and also watching the sunrise from the top of Tooth of Time. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cradle of Liberty Council is honored to present the Silver Beaver Award to Dick Walsh. taking us camping. Thank you so much for supporting scouting. Thank you so much for joining us for a great celebration of scouting in the Cradle of Liberty Council. Many things have changed over the last six months, but we are so grateful to all the leaders that make it happen. Whether you're a scout leader in a church basement in the city or a scout cabin out in the suburbs or anywhere in between, we are so grateful for all that you have done to adapt and keep delivering the program to the youth who need it. I've been around this council a long time and I am so thrilled to see so much great things happening. Our kids have been involved in ways that they never have before and we need to keep it going. Before we wrap up tonight, I also want to thank a couple sponsors that we had. Todd Peterman and Unami Lodge One, they helped to subsidize some of the awards that we presented and the production costs. We've got a link out there. If you would like to support the dinner tonight and help the Secure the Adventure campaign, feel free to do that. As we leave here tonight, again, I just want to thank everybody. The scouting program only happens because of you, and we are so grateful for all that you do every day to deliver the program to our youth. Thank you, and good night.